some of your starters. And uh, we're standing here with Adrian Jones, the general manager of Legoland. First of all, congratulations. Thank you. You've had a lot of work to do, and I've got to say, unrecognizable. That's <laughs> that, that's the one thing that I've heard quite a few people say today. Just, just completely unrecognizable the amount of work you've always already done yeah and okay, just great. so much more to do Thank you. yeah I think uh, as you can see this is a big project first and foremost you know it's a 150 acre site and how do you take on a site like this and maintain the natural beauty of what Cypress Garden is all about add a, a layer of new rides keep existing rides uh, and then add a layer of Lego uh, and literally that right. is the challenge that we've we've had and I think you'll you'll get a feeling for the the sheer scope of what we've done here. And like I said, it's uh, so far you have managed to keep a lot of the um, charm from Cypress Gardens. Uh, there's you know, oak trees everywhere, and here in Florida that's really big. You know, all the oak trees, all the greenery, everything. You guys have things roped off and just taken off. Uh, like you said, you're trying to keep everything with Cypress Gardens, the, the tradition and the history Absolutely, of it. Absolutely, yeah. And, um, what can we expect with the original gardens? Well, the botanical gardens themselves are, are actually exactly the same. Um, okay. we, we, if anything, we're just improving the, the quality of the bridges, the pathways. We'll put some Lego models in there as well. Uh, right. The banyan tree will form the centerpiece of that, as always, which is a beautiful part of the gardens, as we all know. Um, and then really, we, 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 if anything, we're just trying to open up the views, the sight lines to Lake Eloise. So we've demolished a number of buildings over here to improve the sight lines across. And we've, we've right. positioned our mini land right in the center of the park, where before there were there's some buildings that just obscured the whole view. Um, so, so I believe that with what we've done in terms of our master planning is kept what the essence of Cypress Gardens was and added an incredible uh, uh, array of rides, attractions, all positioned to families with 2 to 12, but also maintain the sight lines as well for Lake Eloise and the gardens themselves, which is, is, is a difficult, difficult challenge actually. One of our readers wanted to ask, um, this is definitely a family geared park 2 to 12 as you said, is there going to be much of anything for those above 12? Uh, I mean, not really, no. Not really, no. I think simple uh, answer. I, and, and I think uh, I'd rather be to the point on that. We don't try and be all things to all people. What we do is we do two to twelve, and we do it very well. Right. And we, we master plan all our areas, our zones, our lands, all about that in mind. You know, it, 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 it's all geared to what the parents want in a safe environment for their children. Yes, we have different areas that are targeted to different ages within that 2 to 12. So you've got Duplo for the toddlers right. uh, going up to you know Project X and Lego City which is a little bit more of the, the mid-range. But then you've got a number of shows, you've got a number of different experiences, you can play with Lego which is pretty pretty obvious um, and, and, and things like the Miniland area which are a little bit more passive but also very can also be very interactive right. uh, with quality family fun. Right, you said the uh, Miniland area. I, uh, of course Legoland California is putting in the Star Wars mini land That's that right. I, I never expected the Star Wars fan base or fan bases of any kind to go as crazy for that as as they are. So I mean that does show the kind of passion that's going into just something as simple as Absolutely. a mini land, just, yeah. just a bunch of miniatures. Yeah, I think we, the, the way that meant the Legoland started was in Billund. If, if you read the history books, right. it's all about it. it was a collection of Lego houses that they threw in there and uh, became a, an instant hit. And then they built the rides and shows and attractions around it with time. So Miniland is always the centerpiece of every Legoland park and every Legoland Discovery Center that we do. And we also have uh, what we call the face, take on the face of the place. So you have an area within the Miniland that is actually about that area. So we'll have a Florida section here, we'll have all about the Space Coast, um, and that will be unique to this side. Very good. One thing I've got to ask on a personal level, I, that coaster over there, yep. I rode 84 times in a row as part of the charity event. <laughs> right, okay. That last, that last bank is a, that last turn is a killer. Right. Are there any plans, and really this goes for all of the coasters, that have remained here in Legoland. Uh, are there any plans to do any kind of refurbishment and maybe either tone them up or tone them well, down? Absolutely. I, I think. Well, well let's be, uh, be very clear about that. Every single roller coaster and every ride that we've, we've, we've maintained or we've, we've kept from Old Cypress Gardens has been completely overhauled in every way. The track will be uh, will be completely overhauled. The cars are all, all gone away. In fact, if anything, I think we're buying new cars. We've, we've uh, completely sent all the cars from the flying school there to a way to be serviced. New wheels, new gears, you name it. Same with the Flying Island, it's virtually a, a 
it's not a brand new, completely different ride, but the bearings and all the core workings have been completely changed. So on the inside, it's a brand new beast? Pretty much, yeah. Very um, cool. and, and then what we're adding, for example, with the Coastasaurus here, which was the Triple Hurricane, is the Lego uh, dinosaurs. So it's going to be a, a, they're going to be positioned in a certain way that look as though they're coming across the track. There'll be interactive elements in and around the ride in the centre there. So it's not a wooden roller coaster. It's becoming a Lego dinosaur experience. Exactly. And that's the way I can best to describe what we're doing with the, with the rides. Excellent. Um, did you have any other questions? You did, you can't remember. Yes. Yeah. Um, when it comes to actually drawing people in, mm -hmm. um, how are you guys going to overcome the fact that right now there's no major like interstate or no major highway pulling people in uh, um, Polk County? When we took this site on, I think we were very open and said that uh, we fell in love with the site. We knew the problems that the site had had before, you know, the old Cypress Gardens in terms of the transit here and everything else. Firstly, I think we've got to overcome the perception. The perception is that it's, uh, it's a very, very long distance from Orlando and Tampa. Well, actually, it's 45 minutes away from both, so it's beautifully positioned. And Polk County are working with us at the moment in terms of improving the whole road links here anyway. Uh, you know, the Polk extension eventually will bypass the 27. There'll be lots of uh, you know, public transportation that we'll be working with and, and coach operators in and around Orlando to bring people down here. Uh, road links, ra rail links will all be improved with time. Uh, but at the moment, that isn't that, that isn't going to break us, as it were. We're not we're not dependent on millions and millions and millions of visitors to survive. We, we will be able to you know sustain this in terms of what Merlin do is we're very lean, we're mean, and we provide incredible service. And the infrastructure around it will then build with time. So basically, just plant the seeds and watch it grow. Absolutely, and I've said in a number of different public forums, you know, Legoland is not about the change; it's the catalyst for change broader change within the Winter Haven and the Polk community and I think that they've woken up to that and I think it will bring more investment and, and then it will move us towards a resort position. And things with the resort position, you're talking of course of maybe a Legoland hotel and of course a Legoland water park, I think perhaps? The, I think the key thing to say is that uh, we've got to make the park successful first. You know, we ain't going to invest more money if, if the park doesn't work so you know, I look at, at you guys and say please, please, let's make this successful for Polk and Central Florida and then we can continue to invest in the product, the core product, the park, and then maybe the water park, maybe accommodation, who knows? I mean, there's lots of other different things that Legoland Parks offer now, um, but, but that's time, that's the future. We've got to focus on the park and the here and now. Very good. Well, congratulations on what you've done so far, and good luck with everything to come. Of course, we'll be watching, so. <laughs> Absolutely, well, thanks. We look forward to welcoming you. We've got some actual physical Lego on site, which will be the, probably the next milestone for us, you know? Very good. Awesome.